Hey, everybody. Happy Monday. Mm, mm. Happy Monday. What's going on? What's going on? What it do? <laughs> um, happy Monday, guys. Hey. Nope. That's hey. Not... No, hey. I hope you're having a wonderful start to your week. I hope you had a great weekend. I got a lot of yard work done. All right. Okay, we are all shared out. On the Facebook. Yes, Ashley. All right, let's go to live. We about to be live. Hey, friends, check yourself before you infringe yourself. Okay. Okay, so we are... All shared out on our platforms. Push this over. Uh, we have some great stories tonight. Um, if you are an American Girl fan, we've got a story for you. Uh, if you are an Ice Cube fan, hey, Sincere39, if you're an Ice Cube fan or if you invest using the Robin Hood app, uh, we've got a story for you. Um, if you're a fan of Childish Gambino, otherwise known as Donald Glover, we have a story for you. Uh, if you're a basketball fan, we've got a story for you, particularly about the Toronto Raptors. And to round it all off, to finish us off for the evening, we have a story about delicious donuts. All right. So, you know, get, get whatever you need to get ready for the show. Your tea, your wine, your cognac, <laughs> a pen, a piece of paper, I don't know, whatever you do to get you into the NPL legal dish mood. We're getting started in about a minute, so um, make sure that you share this out to your friends at 8.05, please. Don't contain all my magic, y'all. Share my magic with the world. Um, since you don't know, how was your weekend? Uh, you do anything special? Hello to my friend who's watching on Facebook. I don't know who you are. Please say hi so I can greet you personally. Um, but yeah, we are getting started in just a moment or two. Make sure that you share this out to your friends and whoever you think might need this awesome, awesome, awesome info uh yeah all right mm -hmm. Mm -mm -mm. it was okay all right who's that hey wendy hello all right let's get started i'm hitting the record button welcome 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 happy monday everybody welcome to npl legal dish this is my monday through wednesday live broadcast where i teach business and legal concepts using pop culture and celebrity news uh, if this is your first time watching and you're like who's this lady on the internet or your first time listening and you're like who's this lady on the podcast i'm natalie pierre lewis i am the host of the show and i'm the owner and operator of npl consulting llc a business formation firm what that means is i help people like yourself get your business paperwork together so things like make Making sure you have your articles of incorporation with the state, making sure you have EIN numbers and DUNS numbers, making sure you have appropriate contracts for clients and partners, uh, having brand protection strategies so people don't steal your business ideas and hiring and training strategies so people don't sue you for discrimination. These are all of the things that I help you accomplish in your business. If you're wondering why I'm qualified to help you do this, I am a licensed attorney, have been one for 15 years and counting. I've started multiple businesses for myself and others, both online and offline. I've had many careers in the realms of entrepreneurship the law, education, hospitality, and administrative support. 
And most important, I'm very passionate about making business and legal education as accessible to everyone as possible. Not everybody has the time, the money, or the desire to go to business school or to law school, but a lot of you have amazing business ideas. And if you're going to be successful in business, there are just some things that you need to know. There's no way around it. So that's why I'm here, okay? So if you are in the startup phase of your business or you've been in business for a while, but you need to like get legit or you've been in business for a long time and you need to get legit, go to linktree forward slash MPL consulting firm so you can connect with me. You can connect with me a lot of different ways there. You can do a one-on-one -on -one appointment. Like um, if you're a first-time client, you can do a free 15-minute consult. Um, again, that's linktree forward slash MPL consulting firm. Hi, Trista Taylor 373. You can download the free biz launch cheat sheet that will help you choose and start your dream business in seven days or less. You can also access many of my digital products, my video trainings and my ebook bundles. Um, this month we are focusing on trademarks and you can pick up the protect your biz, um, ebook bundle where, uh, where you, um, where you get my trademark patent and copyright um, ebooks. Okay. Um, and at linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm is also where you can, uh, subscribe to the YouTube and the podcast so that if you miss, Hey Cheryl, if you miss, um, an episode, you can catch up at your leisure. Okay. Um, so, oh, you, are you tagging people, Wendy? Thank you. Um, so yeah. So if you are, yeah, so those are all the ways that you can connect with me. Also at Linktree forward slash NPL Consulting Firm. Don't forget that is where you can get your NPL Legal Dish merch, okay? Um, these were designed by myself and one of the faithful viewers of the show. I'm really proud of them. Um, get your t-shirts as well. They come in black, white, and navy blue. Um, but yeah, so Linktree forward slash NPL Consulting Firm. It's everywhere you want to be when it comes to me. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's move on past. I've shilled my wares to you. Let's get on to why we're here. We are here for NPL Legal Dish. Here is how the show works. I think we might have some new people around. But here's how the show works. I pull stories from the news, stories that I get from you lovely people, stories from blog sites, anywhere that I find inspiration or something with a lesson that we can learn as entrepreneurs and we discuss them, okay? Um, so this is a time for you to get involved. I want to hear your questions. I want your comments as long as they're respectful. I will be asking you to put comments and, and emojis and things into the uh the, the dialogue box, if you are driving, don't worry about it. I do not want to be responsible for anybody's accident, all right? But um, let's get crack a lacking. all right? If you have heard of American Girl Dolls, please give me um, an American flag emoji. If you have heard of American Girl Dolls, please give me an American flag emoji. Um, American Girl, if you don't know, they are a line of dolls obviously um you never heard of american dolls since they're 39 they're a line of dolls they're pretty pricey but you know they have backstories they have really cute clothes they they are high one of one slow grind um they're just they're very popular dolls right okay thank you wendy leader wendy leader knows what american girl doll is um if you don't know uh we actually talked about this, I want to say, last year. It had to be last year because this year hasn't been that long. Um, but last year sometime, I told you, you've seen them, Zephyrina? Okay. Hey, hey, doll. I didn't even see you come in the room. Um, last year, we talked about a story. There is an astronomer. Her name is Lucianne Walkowitz, okay? And Lucianne, she's an astronomer. She is like the senior fellow at a planetarium. She's all about space, right? And she has a very signature look. She has a purple streak going through her hair that she wears all the time. And she wears sparkly sneakers all the time. Real life. Okay. You can look her up. Lucianne, Lucianne Walkowitz, right? Um, well, last year, American Girl came out with um, an astronaut doll whose name was Luciana Vega. And coincidentally, Luciana Vega also had purple streaks in her hair and sparkly sneakers. And Lucianne Walkowitz uh, went to American Girl and was like, excuse me, you um, have basically ripped off my whole look and my whole, you know, persona of being a person who's really interested in space to make your doll. And I'm calling infringement, right? 
we talked about this and I think most of you agree that it was infringement, but we have an update on this case and I wanted to get your input. So this case between Lucy Ann Walkowitz and American Girl, the case has been dismissed, meaning both parties went to the judge and said, we don't want to do this anymore, right? But we don't have any details as to why um, the case was dismissed. Why do you think Lucy Ann dropped her infringement case against American Girl. She was like, look, you guys, you're taking my look, you're taking my career, you're taking my fashion choices, like, and, and you're profiting off of them, and you didn't even, like, bother to, to cut me a check, right? So she was doing all this, and as of now, the case is dismissed. Why do you think the case got dismissed? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why do you think it got dismissed? Wendy Leader is giving me all money emojis. I think you you might be onto something. I think, hey, 76 Grim K. Sincere39 said tired. That could be it too. Um, Wendy, Wendy said uh, money, like Wendy might have been paid off by American girl. Maybe, maybe they um maybe they were like, look, take this check, let us do the doll, or we'll give you royalties for every doll um every doll sold, right? Um, hey, everybody. Um, we don't know, Zephyrina. The product is still out there. All we know is that the case has been dismissed. So one person said money. Another person said that uh, she's she might be tired. That is something that is a possibility too. A lot of times in... Um, when when you have a smaller company going or a smaller person going against a bigger company, sometimes companies will try to use the fact that they have a bigger wallet to, you know, kind of drag out the litigation to make you want to quit because you're running out of money. Maybe that's what happened, too. We don't know. Um, Cheryl said they settled for a significant dollar amount. OK, uh, Trista Taylor 373 said she got the coins. We don't know. They're, they're being very tight lipped about this. So that leads me to believe that Lucienne did get some money from American Girl Doll or maybe she got some kind of profit sharing agreement, because I'm sure if it was a matter of her just not having the money anymore, she would have made a statement and said, you know, I just can't go on with this any further. But the fact that both sides are being real, real quiet about what is going on and why they dismissed this case, I'm pretty sure there was some type of check cut. But um, yeah, but I just wanted to bring that to you guys to let you know that even when, you know, if, if someone, you can dismiss an infringement suit. Once you file one, you're not, you know, you don't have to go through with it if both sides decide at one point, you know, we don't want to do this anymore. We figured it out on our own. You can dismiss it. But I also wanted you guys to know about this case because if you are a person who has, you know, um, we all have a right to who we are, to our images, to, you know, our style, particularly if you are a person of some, you know, of some uh, fame, be that worldwide or in your field, right? So a company can't just take your face and use it to promote their product, which brings us to our next story. Um, if if I'm going to say a phrase to you guys and I want you to tell me what artist comes to mind when you hear this phrase. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Who do you think of when you hear the phrase? Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Nuchigiri, check yourself before you riggedy wreck yourself. Who do you think of when you hear, check yourself before you wreck yourself? DOS effects. Okay, thank you, Sincere39. Um, thank you, Cheryl Whiteside. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, all right. Okay, so you recognize that phrase belongs to a song, right? Michael Jackson, 76 Grim K, okay, what? I don't think Michael said that. Um, and how many of you, here's another question. How many of you invest using the Robinhood app? If you invest using the Robinhood app, give me an R in the comments. Give me an R in the comments. Trista Taylor said DOS effects. Days of, it's okay. DOS effects. All right. 
You couldn't remember your wild card. Sincere 39 gave me an R. So Sincere 39 invests with the Robin Hood app. Or if you have heard of the Robin Hood app, give me an R. Okay. If you don't know what Robin Hood is, it is just like I said, it's, it's an app where you can invest in stocks, um, other things, I think maybe crypto at this point. I don't know. I don't use Robin Hood. Um, thank you, Wendy. But, uh, recently ice cube, um, it, it, you're going to understand why, why he comes into this ice cube, uh, has launched a, an infringement lawsuit against, uh, Robin Hood. You heard some bad things. I heard some bad things too, girl. Um, it's okay, Trista. Uh, but, uh, Robin Hood, apparently, you, you know, they, they've been in some trouble with the news when GameStop was going crazy. They like stopped trading or whatever, but they are in even further trouble. Now the famed West coast rapper, ice cube, the rapper turned actor, um, is currently suing Robin Hood because they used a photo of ice cube and then they um, put the phrase under him, under him saying, correct yourself before you wreck yourself. And if you um, don't know cor correcting or corrections, it's a term that's used in investment. Um, <clears throat> that's about all I can tell you. I, I'm not an investment professional. Okay. But they use a picture of ice cube to, you know, um, for Robin Hood, and then they said, "Correct yourself before you wreck yourself." They did not get Ice Cube's permission to use his photo, nor did they get permission to use the line from or to alter the line from the DOS FX song. Okay, now Robin Hood has had in um you know endorsement deals with celebrities in the past, including people like Jay Z and Jared Leto. Um, but in this case, apparently they did not, uh, see Fitch to reach out to Ice Cube to get his permission. Now, Ice Cube, uh, so Ice Cube is suing them for infringement. Now, um, and he is also saying that this is retaliation because Ice Cube's business partner is suing Robin Hood for all that stuff they did with, with, uh, GameStop and, you know, shorting people on, on stock sales and selling and things like that. So... Ice Cube's partner sues Robin Hood. Robin Hood then uses uh, Ice Cube's photo and a, a line from a, 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 a famous hip hop song to, you know, to talk about their services and they got no permission. Now, here's what Robin Hood is saying. They're saying that they got the picture fair and square and they're not using the picture to promote, you know, any commercial activities. They were using it for a blog article, Caring Hearts. Hi, Caring Hearts, seeing your living. So what do you think about this, uh, this claim from Robin Hood that they say they are not using the photo for commercial use and they are using it for a blog article? Hmm. Um, what, what do you, do you think Robin Hood is, you know, they, they were just like, you know, we're just out here writing articles or do you think they're trying to, they're trying to get over Robin Hood. You're an app. You are in business. You understand how business works, right? Um, since 39 said, can't use his likeness without his permission. Absolutely. It's just like, um, if, if I were, if I were to use, you know, say I, I was endorsed by Robin Hood, because that's essentially what you say when you use somebody's image, you're saying that they, they endorse this product. They endorse this service. If I used Robin Hood's, you know, logo on my website, you know, and, and, you know, people might think I'm affiliated with Robin Hood. Ice Cube is not affiliated with, uh, Robin Hood as a matter of fact, his business partner has an active lawsuit against Robin Hood. So um, do you think this is retaliation against this lawsuit? Or do you think that Robin Hood just got lazy? What do you think? Um, since it 39 said express permission. Yes, they should have gotten express permission. So the 26 Green Grace said, I agree with Cynthia 39. So what do you think about this? Do you think that Robin Hood, they are doing this to retaliate because of the lawsuit? Or do you think they just got lazy? What do you think? Cynthia 39 said, sounds like it sounds like what Cynthia 39? Is it laziness or is it retaliation? Mm -mm 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 -mm. 
Mm, 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 mm. Ooh, you know what? I forgot to do our MPL nugget. I'll do it at the end of the show. Uh, 76 Grimke said laziness. Uh, Sincere 39 said retaliation. Okay. Hi, New Haitian. Um, I think it could be, honestly, I think it's retaliation. Um, Wendy said retaliate uh, because Robin Hood has had endorsement deals with celebrities before. You've had celebrity endorsement deals with Jay-Z, who is like a billionaire. Why? I, and not to say that, you know, Ice Cube is broke, but you couldn't reach out to Ice Cube and get his permission. Like, come on now. Um, but yeah, I think Robin Hood was, I think it might be a little, a little bit of retaliation here because they are, yes, since they're not companies are very petty. You would think that, you know, this is supposed to be business and we're supposed to be, you know, uh, put our feelings to the side, but no business is all about feelings. You know, they get involved and, and that's just how it is. That is, you know, a variable when you're in business, when you're dealing with human beings, there are going to be emotions there. Okay. All right. So, all right. Uh, before we move on to our next stories, I want to remind you guys that you are watching NPL Legal Dish. This is my Monday through Wednesday live broadcast where I teach business and legal concepts using pop culture and celebrity news. If you are in the startup phase of your business and you need some help, you know, wading through all of that legal paperwork and figuring out, you know, how do I get set up? I need, you know, to get my certification, need my articles of incorporation. How do I set up a bank, a, a business bank account? I'm your girl. You want to talk to me, go to linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm and book your free 15 minute consultation today. Okay. Cheryl said, sounds like someone was lazy. It could be that. And I also think there's a little bit of retaliation on there. Cause it's just very strange that of all celebrities, they could, whose images they could have used without permission. They choose the image of a celebrity whose business partner is currently suing them. Right. But that's my opinion. Anyway, moving on, moving on. If you are a fan of Childish Gambino, AKA Donald Glover, please give me, uh, give me a baby emoji. If you have, if you are a fan or if you have heard of Childish Gambino or also known as Donald Glover, give me a baby emoji. Okay. Um, and while you guys do that, I'm sure if you, if you have heard of childish Gambino, I'm sure. Thank you. Sincere 39. I'm sure that you have heard of his, you know, song that was a big hit. This is America, right? Thank you. 76 Grim K for the baby. Um, I said the baby because you know, it's childish Gambino. So whatever. Um, but if you remember the song, this is America, give me a thumbs up. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up if you rem remember Childish Gambino's song, This Is America, that came out in, I think, 2018. Um, you know, the song was everywhere. People parodied it. It was a big hit. And I want to say he won a Grammy for it, if I'm not mistaken. All right. Um, yeah. But uh, apparently Childish Gambino might have stolen... Uh, this is America, or at least um, the idea for it. There is a, an American hip hop, an American rapper who goes by the name Kid West. What is, oh, okay. Who goes by the name Kid West, K-I-D-D-W-E-S. Uh, and in 2016, Mr. West, not Mr. West, Mr. West, uh, thank you, Wendy, released, and thank you, Cheryl, released um, a song on SoundCloud called Made in America, right? Um, and he is saying that ch not uh, Childish Gambino, or he's suing Childish Gambino, Young Thug, who was a feature and, and I think wrote some lyrics for it, RCA Records and Rock Nation for copyright infringement for his song. Now, if you go on YouTube, if you, if you care, or you, if you care to, go look up K I D D space W E S Kid West Made in America. Okay, and go listen to it. When I listened to it, the cadence sounded very much like This Is America. There were some modifications, but you know you can tell that there is a resemblance. Also, Kid West 
hired a sound expert to uh, analyze both songs. And the sound experts found that at a core level, the song, you know, one uh, Childish Gambino song was based on his. So Kid West is currently suing Childish uh, Gambino, his record label, and anybody else involved with This Is America, right? And I bring this case to you to remind you that you are never, ever, ever too big to be sued for copyright infringement. And you might get away with it at the beginning, but it's going to catch up to you if the other person did their due diligence. Childish Gambino, you are a super, a superstar, right? Somebody on your team could have gotten this, the, this sample cleared or, you know, the idea cleared. You could have given him a writing credit. What, what happened? And this is, this is happening more and more. If you remember, um, Zephyrina said, or too, too little. I'm not sure what you mean, Zephyrina. Um, w w not long ago, we talked about her being sued because, um, I forget which song. One of the songs that she came out with, uh, it turned out that uh, they they lifted the melody from some guy on, on YouTube, right? So as the world becomes smaller because technology brings us closest together, brings us closer together, since 39 said it does sound similar. Okay, so he did a, li a little investigation. Um, as the world brings us closer together uh, or the internet brings us closer together, the ability to, you know, steal people's ideas is becoming easier and easier. And that means that you have to be more diligent as an intellectual property owner, as the owner of either a trademark, a copyright or a patent, being diligent to make sure nobody's out here using your work, right? You got to keep, you got to keep a sharp eye out here to make sure nobody is, um, you know, taking your stuff because if you wait too long, you may not be able to, um, you know, to file. And that brings us to our next story. Hold on. Zephyrina has a comment. Um, hold on. Uh, 76 Grim K said, oh, I like Childish Gambino. Zephyrina said, I was saying that in context, you saying you can never be too big to get sued. You're never too little. Oh, yes, absolutely, my dear. Um, since 39 said, it's because no one really creates anymore. You know what? And I can't even blame you for saying that because I have my, you know, music going on all day. And, you know, I'll listen to Spotify and they'll do release radar and I hear all the new songs. And it's all samples of songs that are barely like 10, 15 years old. I like the song. How are you sampling um, J. Cole's uh, Big, Bigger Dreams? That song is, is barely five years old. Anyway, but I digress. Anyway, um, moving on. See, you feel me, Cynthia 39. We here. We here. Uh, but moving on to our next story as to um, to illustrate why you need to file timely when you find someone is infringing on your intellectual property. Um, there is, <laughs> since I said no one can play instruments anymore. Mm. Um, well, that's because they took the music programs out the school. So we can't blame the kids. Uh, but uh, there is a, a musician by the name of Don Everly. He was a founding member of the Everly Brothers. Um, he, uh, he wrote a song in the 1960s called Kathy's Clown. Um, now when the song first came out, him and his brother were going all over the place. They were performing the song. They said, yeah, this is our song. We made it. Da, 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 da. But then sometime after the song had lost its luster, they fell out as brothers. And Don was like, you know what? You ain't on the song no more. I'm taking your credits off. You do not have, um, you know, a stake in the song anymore. Here's, here's some money, whatever. But so this is, this is like in, um, in the eighties, right? Um, 1980 when they found it out, it is only in the last few years, high healthy girl gang that Don's brother's family, his descendants, his, his kids, they were trying to sue Don Everly for, um, to, to get his, to get his, their, their father's royalties back from this song, right? So they went to the court and they're like, hey, my dad wrote this song in the 60s with his brother. They fell out in the 80s and um, his brother has basically taken him off all the rights. We want those rights reinstated, right? What do you think happened? 
What do you think happened when these kids came to the court in, you know, 2015, 2016 and said, hey, we would like our father's rights restored from this 1960s song? What do you think the court said? What do you think the court said? Hey, hey. What do you think the court said about these descendants of um, Mr. Everly coming back, you know, almost 40 years after uh, Don said, you know, you can't have any rights to it. No, since the 39, the rights were not restored. This, the, the court said, look, this happened in the 80s, all right? And Don's brother knew that his rights had been removed and he never bothered to, you know, really talk about it, all right? Yes, Zephyrine, it's too late. Because again, this happened in the 80s. Don was like, you know what? You ain't on the song no more. Um, and when you find that someone has violated your copyrights, you have three years from when you um, discover the infringement to, uh, to, to, to try and get it back. Um, and this did not fall under that because during um, his life, uh, Don's brother's name was Paul. Paul never bothered to get his rights reinstated. And by the time his kids or descendants were like, you know, we want it back, it's over. It's almost 40 years later. So the court was like, no, you should have filed by 1983. So you are a little late. So they, um, so Don Everly, he keeps all of his, you know, rights and royalties to the song, Kathy's clown. Um, since the 39, how can you remove someone after the fact? I mean, you could file with, with the, with the copyright, um, um, agency nothing is permanent as long as you got the coin um and we actually talked about this story a while ago i'll i'll look it back up and see if i can find the the, the fine details because i was just kind of reciting the, the details as i knew from memory but yeah but um don everly retains all of the rights to the 1960s song kathy's clown because uh his brother's family waited way too long um to uh, fight it. Since the other nine said, wow, that is petty. It is petty. It is very petty. Something must have happened. Like, I don't know. His brother Paul must have slept with his wife or something. <laughs> All right. Before we move on to our final two stories of the evening, again, I want to remind you that you are watching NPL Legal Dish. Yes, 76 Green Fair Family Feud. Um, I am Natalie... You, you, you remember the story? Yeah. Um, I'm Natalie Pierre Lewis. I'm the host of the show and I'm a business formation specialist and licensed attorney. I want to help make your dream business into a reality. Go to linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm to connect with me today. Okay. Let's go on to our next stories. Basketball fans, please give me your basketball emojis. Basketball fans, please give me your basketball emojis. Um, and who can tell me the name of Drake's favorite basketball team? If you're a basketball fan, give me a basketball emoji. And if you know, tell me the name of Drake's favorite basketball team. Thank you, Zephyrina, for the basketball. Since the 39 said the Raptors. You are absolutely right. Drake is a big fan of the Toronto Raptors. Um, and the Toronto Raptors have been in a seven year lawsuit with a uh, monster energy drink about seven years ago. The Raptors, uh, changed their logo. Thank you. 76 Grim K changed their logo, um, to be it's, it's, you can see it. If you look at my stories, it's a basketball. And instead of those straight lines that you usually see on a basketball, they look like claw marks. Um, and it's like three claw, claw marks. I guess if you look at it, it could be like a sideways M. Anyway, when they filed for this logo, Monster Energy sued them for trademark infringement. Now, if you have watched this show with any regularity, you know that Monster Energy, they like to sue people. Thank you, Trista Taylor 373. They, they, will, they sue anybody who even 
thinks of the letter M. So the Toronto Raptors were no ex were no exception. Monster Energy Drink said this claw mark on this basketball looks too close to our Monster M on our energy drinks. And you, and they and they have they have been in court for the last 7 years fighting for this logo. Um, now we have, like I said, we talk about Monster all the time. Monster is known as a trademark bully. There are some companies that for some reason like to spend money on lawsuits, you know, claiming that people have infringed on things and Monster is one of them. So after seven years of fighting with Monster Energy Drink, what do you think the result was for the Toronto Raptors? Do you think they're going to have to change their logo or can they keep it? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Because they came to a decision. Do you think the Toronto Raptors are going to have to change their logo or are they going to get to keep it? Okay, we're making good time. Zephyrina said change. Any other, any other? Um, 76 Cream Cray said keep it. Uh, since the 39 said, keep it. Zafarina, I am afraid you are in the minority, my dear. The Toronto Raptors are going to be able to keep their new, their, well, not, it's not so new anymore because it's seven years old, but they're going to be able to keep their logo. The judge was like, look, it, it, nobody's going to mistake this for a monster energy thing. It's literally in a Toronto Raptors thing and it's to the side. It's not like it's a, it's a, it, and it by no means are they trying to make an M. So the judge was like, monster energy drink, go find something to do, girl. You're doing too much. Um, do you think that was the right decision? Or do you think Monster Energy Drink had a credible argument that the Toronto Raptors claw basketball logo was too similar to uh, Monster's logo? Zephyrina said, that's good. Okay. Since 39 said, you think that was the right decision? I think it was the right decision too. Like I said, Monster Energy Drink, they are a big trademark bully. They sue for these types of things all the time for no reason. Um, so I'm glad. And and they usually lose. So you would think they would stop. But for them, they say that it's zealously protecting, you know, their their intellectual property interests. Hello, Panamanian Empress. Um, okay, but um, good luck to the Toronto Raptors. Moving on to our final story of the evening. All my donut lovers, if you like donuts, give me a donut emoji. If you like donuts, um, I don't, I don't really like donuts. I can do a glazed donut every now and then, but donuts aren't really my thing. I'm not a sweet bread person. I don't like sweet breads. Um, but if you like donuts, give me a donut emoji. Donuts. Donuts. I almost named this show Donut Forget Your Trademark Search, but um, I realized I had already named a show that. Um, Sincere39 said he eats certain donuts. 76 Grimke said, I like glazed too. Hi, Jenna Smith Harris. Um, any more donut lovers? Uh, okay. Well, if you like I am, I'm very finicky since they're 39. I'm super finicky about food. It's like my friends get so frustrated with me. Um, thank you, Wendy, for the donut emoji. Um, uh, since they're 39 said powder and cinnamon. Okay, cool. Um, well, if you are a donut lover and you're ever in New Bedford, Rhode Island, or Rhode Island in general, they have, um, thank you, Cheryl, for the donut. They have some donut places um, that you might want to check out, but there might be a little bit of confusion or there might have been up until recently. So there is a restaurant or a, a donut shop in New Bedford, Rhode Island that <laughs> they stop hanging out with me. I still hang out with them. We just, you know, I just eat what I like to eat. Um, but yeah, there's a donut shop called Ma's Donuts or it was called Ma's Donuts in New Bedford. Um, and you know, they got shut down during the pandemic, but they, but you know, luckily they survived, but they are going to be reopening with a brand new name. Um, 
Uh, they haven't released the name yet, but why do you think Ma's Donuts in New Bedford, Rhode Island had to change their name? Why do you think Ma's Donuts in New Bedford, Rhode Island had to change their name? I kind of gave you a clue at the beginning of the story. Let me know what you, why do you think they had to change their name? Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Um, because there was already a Moz Donuts in Rhode Island. Now y'all know Rhode Island is about this big, right? In Middletown, Rhode Island, there was already, <laughs> 76 Grim Case said sounds wacky. There was already um, a, a restaurant called Moz Donuts and More, and they had a registered trademark since 2017. Now, um, how could Moz Donuts in New Bedford have prevented this, where now they're going to have to change all of their advertisements, their names, their signs, everything? What should Moz Donuts in New Bedford have done before they decided to name their restaurant Moz Donuts? What should they have done? Trista Taylor 373 said, Cake Boss? Is that what they're calling it? Zephyrina said, check trademarks. Yes, mm, check the trademarks. And that, my friends, that brings us to our NPL nugget of the night. Not file a trademark since 839. Check the trademarks, like Zephyrina said. Had Moz Donuts done a trademark search, you know, they could have, they would have found out that there was already a Moz Donuts. Yes, 76 Grim Grape. They would have found out that there was already a Moz Donuts in Middletown, Rhode Island, and would have saved themselves a lot of time and money. So, the, um, and as I continue with our NPL nugget, in terms of what do I mean by trademark search, there are three major ways for you to do a trademark search. I'm going to tell you what they are, but I also want you guys who are veterans in the show, and we've talked about this, I want you to put them in the comment box too. So there are three ways for you, general ways for you to check if something is trademarked. The first one is you can go to the USPTO website. They have a search um, function called the test trademark search. And you can, you know, put in whatever it is that you're looking for to see if it's trademarked. Um, and it'll give you a whole list of things, right? Second thing you can do is you can check with your state. There are state trademarks as well or regional. Um, you know, someone may, may not want to do the whole, you know, may not want to go through all of the expense of a federal trademark. So they may go with a state trademark. So check with your state and surrounding states to see if someone has a similar name. And the last thing that you can do is just a general Google search. All right. See if there's somebody already out there with your business name. There's a lot of tools out here that you can use to do your searches. Or if you just don't feel like it, then hire out to an attorney to do it for you. But our MPL nugget of the evening is when you are doing a trademark search, there are three major places for you to check. The USPTO website, your state, um, your state um, files, and just doing general Google searches, all right? So I want you to keep that in mind as you come forward with your amazing business ideas going forward. Ooh, okay, we have used all of our time. You, no, you got it right, 76 Grim K. You got it right, USPTO state Google search. That's my girl. That Y'all know 76 Grim K is on the writing team, okay? When we get picked up by some network, be they TV or web series, she coming with me, okay? Um, but yes, but those are the stories that I wanted to share with you tonight. Make sure that you guys, um, if you missed any part of the show, uh, you know, you can go back and watch the replay either here or on Instagram or uh, Facebook, Instagram, or on the YouTube channel if you give me a few minutes to upload it. Hi, M Mr. OXB Brown Sugar. Um, yeah. Uh, and, uh, if you want more information on trademarks, make sure that you pick up the protect, that you pick up the protect your biz ebook bundle that is on sale right now for $29.97. Um, go to link forward slash NPL consulting firm. It's the first button. Um, we will be back here tomorrow evening with more stories. If you find anything you want me to talk about, someone sent me a story right before, um, this show right before the show started about Mariah Carey. We're talking about that first thing tomorrow. Um, 
And yeah, just take care of yourselves. We're going to be back here at 8 o'clock tomorrow. I'll tell your friends about me. Go to Linktree forward slash NPL Consulting Firm. Go see all the stuff I got going. Go get your show merch. Um, so I hope you guys had a great time with me. I had a great time with you. I love the energy. I love the responses, the engagement. I love all of that. Um, as we end, I want to say good night to my parents and to my sister and all my family and friends who watch and to all of you beautiful people, take care of yourselves and we'll be back tomorrow. Okay. Bye.